Thank you for tuning in. You are listening to another episode of Drive Through Spurs Takes with your boy, Rob, from a Bucking Spurs podcast. Make sure that you go in and subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast jam on. We are there. Today, we're talking big men. Damn bigs, get big, right? Our biggest big man that we need to talk about, obviously, our all-star. The guy who doesn't get enough credit in my eyes. LaMarcus Aldridge. LaMarcus Aldridge, guys, we, we I feel like we shit on him a little bit too much. That we poo-poo on him, on, on what he does for us. And we're not happy with it. But guys, I mean, but, but re- realistically, the dude averages 21 points a game just as much as DeMar DeRozan. And he's buckets. Like, he get, he gives us mad buckets. And, like, just the other day, I was looking at his highlights um, because something that I wanted to implement into... I, I, w- I, was, I was wrapping my mind around big men and how they get position on the block. And because I'm a coach, you know, I, I, I coach, you know, uh, high school basketball. And I got a couple big men that are really raw and they have no idea how to battle for position. And... And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to wrap my head around that for a little while because the season's coming up and and I got to teach these young kids how to play. And there's almost no one better right now in the league that gets position on the block better than LaMarcus Aldridge. LaMarcus Aldridge is a hell of a post player, hell of a high post player. Guys, he's a walking bucket. Come on, let's be real. Let's be real. And yeah, he's not Tim Duncan. And I think coming into this season, year two of him and DeMar DeRozan playing together, we should expect them to evolve. I, I want to see them take uh, another step in their game, if that's shooting threes or if that's just being more dynamic as, as a tandem. If you were to put those two guys together against any of the other dynamic duos right now in the Western Conference, I'll take my chances. I'll take my chances. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, you know, Jokic, Jamal Murray. I take DeMar DeRozan and Marcus Aldridge all day, and that's because both of those guys are walking buckets. Like, let's let's not forget that, Spurs Nation. Let's not forget it. So my big thing coming into this year is I'm not too sure if we're going to want to play big as much as we used to you know i think ever since we've had lamarcus aldridge in our in our hands and on our team we've always wanted to pair him up next to another big tim duncan once tim duncan left we brought in Pau gasol <clears throat> and then we tried to do a lot of high low game right we wanted to zig while everyone else was zagging i felt like the league was going small small ball small ball small ball small ball three point shooting three point shooting three point shooting three point shooting then the spurs are like no we're gonna go big we're gonna go two bigs we're gonna go high low we're gonna beat you down in the block and you're not gonna be able to beat us that way which is smart because it was the warriors league for so long and shoot hell it still might be we don't know but it's definitely not the same now and so we no one was gonna beat the warriors playing the warrior style basketball and that's smart on our behalf from our coaching staff and our gm to be like you know what let's not try to out warrior the warriors let's do something totally different and and make sure that we're playing solid defense and let's see if we can hang and you know what when we had Kawhi and timmy and uh, uh lamarcus that that one year before everything went to shit like we we hung and then even the year after that when when the zaza thing happened we were there and we're that's what we were doing we we're playing too big basketball right so um we had the twin tower look thing going on but I don't think that this year is going to be like that. I, I, I see the Warriors now, not the Warriors. So the landscape changes. And I feel like, you know what? Our big man depth is not so important this year as it has been before, right? Um, not saying that our bigs aren't good enough, but look, I don't see us. If, if we're going to go two bigs, it's going to be Jakob and, uh, and Lamarcus Aldridge. But. That's not that high-low post game. You can't get that out of Jakob. Jakob's more of a bruiser. He's a will player. He's 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 smart, but you know he's not very skilled with the ball. I mean, he can finish, right? But he's not. How 
You know what I'm talking about. He's not like Pau, Boris Diaw. He's not, you know, that type of player. Okay. But LaMarcus Aldridge, I don't want him to leave. I'm, I'm willing, like, and everyone's kind of poo-pooing on him too because he's always wearing red. He's wearing red in all his vacation photos. He shows up here and there. He's always wearing red and black, right? So it's like, oh, great. You know, those are like little tips of the hat that he wants to go back to Portland. And you know what? He might want to go back to Portland, and that's fine. If he wants to go back to Portland, like, I, I, with, after all this Kawhi stuff, I don't want anyone to be here that doesn't want to be here. But I think LaMarcus Aldridge wants to be here at least to finish out his contract. I feel like he's going to ride it out, and then he's going to test the market once he becomes a free agent again him and DeMar DeRozan but for this next two years this team that we have put together for the next two years of DeMar, Rudy Gay, Patty Mills, Marco Bellinelli, Damari Carroll, LaMarcus Aldridge all these two-year contract guys I feel like I want I want it I I, I want to see it I, I feel like it's good enough. I feel like it's good enough. We have continuity now behind us. We have experience playing together behind us. And the Marcus Aldridge is a huge part of what we do. He's our first option. Every time we come down the floor, we're looking for the Marcus Aldridge first, right? Because he's doing, like I said earlier, he's doing a really good job of pinning his defender early. You know, and so we look to get him a bucket. Because he if he touches the ball, most likely he's going to get a bucket. Now, a lot of people like to poo-poo his, his, his playoff performance. And you know what? We all could have played better, man. It's not all on him. It's not all on Marcus. <clears throat> in Game 7 of Denver, in Game 5 of Denver, you know, we, we all could have played better. He wasn't the only one. So I'm not hanging, I'm not, I'm not hanging that series. I'm not going to put the blame on one person in that series. Besides the one game where DeMar got ejected for throwing the ball at the ref, that's something I have a huge problem with. Um, but other than that... Denver was a good team. They were the number two seed in the in the in the or the number yeah the number two seed in the West last year for a reason. And uh, I think that was a good battle. And we're tested now. We're battle tested, guys. Sometimes you need to face adversity in order to overcome adversity, right? And we hadn't you know the only adversity we, we've been facing all season last year was you know the the newness of the team, the new personnel, and and they're trying to figure things out on defense. But LaMarcus Aldridge, I'm glad he's coming back. I wouldn't mind if he re-signs with us. I, I'm saying that right now. But for the meantime, I'm, I'm happy to see him. I hope he rested this summer. And I hope he comes into training camp healthy. And I hope he worked on his three-point game a little bit. Because I want to see him take just a few more threes. Just a few more threes. And we're good. Okay. Wow, so I spent almost this whole eight minutes talking about LaMarcus. Let's get into Jakob. Jakob Podol, the next man in our depth chart. Jakob is a will guy. Two people that impressed me the most last year in the playoffs against Denver was Bryn Forbes and Jakob Podol. 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 Jakob Podol. Right? So Jakob was a bruiser. He went in there and was all about his business. He wasn't scared of nobody. He he played his ass off. He defended well. He laid that nasty screen on Jamal Murray. Y'all remember that screen? Oh my god, it was dirty. I was in transition. Just bam, just leveled his ass. And Jamal Murray comes over here and tries to push Jakob. Like, come on. Jakob turns around like, what do you want, little man? What do you want from me, little man? You know, so anyways, Jakob uh, is a hell of a defender. I think he did well finishing around the rim last year. If there's one thing that I want him to improve on, that's being a better pick and roll player. Um, because I don't really see him doing a lot of pick and roll. Like I want him to be able to catch lobs. I want him to be able, be able to finish at the basket a little bit uh, with a little bit more authority. He's got soft hands. He can finish. He can do it. He can, he can, you know, finish underneath the basket, reverse layup, things like that. So I'm excited to see him come back. And he's young, you know, he's, he's one of these under 25 guys that we have. And I want to see him be a piece of our future for a very long time. For a very long time. So Jakob, I hope he's coming back healthy. I know I've seen him work out a little bit here and there. He's been in the gym. Um, hopefully he's working with Timmy. And, and hopefully he adds a little bit something to his, a little something to his game. You know, do we want him to really shoot mid-range jumpers while he's out there? Do we want him to be a sh like, you know, shoot the ball? A lot of us would think, well, he doesn't really shoot the ball. Yeah, but I think when he's out there... The lineups that he's out there with, yeah, we don't want him shooting the ball, right? Like, we'll take anyone else on the floor shooting the ball versus Jakob. Jakob knows his role. 
I think he's going to be able to do it very well at a high level. As far as big concern, that's, okay, so three, two, one. So as far as our big man depth concern, it, it, it really stops there, right? It really stops with Jakob Pertl and LaMarcus Aldridge and the way we use them individually in lineups or the way that we use them together in lineups. Now, the next two guys that I'm, I want to talk about, I'm going to kind of bundle them up together because I feel like they're both in the same boat and we're both at the same point with both of these cats. And that's Drew Ebanks. Big Drew and Chimezi. Me too, right? So those two guys are in the same spot. Those are the two that are going to be fighting for third string minutes at the center spot or either at that small ball power forward spot, you know, or, or I, you know, just, or, you know, because they're, they're a little bit different. You know, to be honest, Chimezi is a lot like LaMarcus in talking about their game. And Drew Ebanks is a lot like Jakob. You know, they're kind of like uh, poor man's versions of both of those players. Chemezi has a lot of game. I've been hard on Chemezi before, but to be fair to myself, if we're talking, if we're going back a season ago, I was very high on Chemezi. Coming out of out of USC, I really liked his game. Um, everything I saw out of him this summer, in uh, I'm sorry, this past season with Austin Toros, Austin Spurs. I liked it a lot. It reminded me a lot of LaMarcus Aldridge. And I think that Drew, this summer, kind of, he took his opportunity. And his opportunity came in the summer league. And he played a lot. And as far as I'm concerned, Drew was just as good, if not better, than any other big man in that summer league. Hands down, he can score. He's an offensive threat. He's a juggernaut on the defensive end. He's a monster. He can put you on a poster. Ugly. But he does all of his work in the low block. I think he can hit a mid-range jumper, but he doesn't take many of them. Some of his uh, defensive rotations need work, um, but I think he's coachable, and I think he's gotten a lot better too. And, you know, last year we saw Drew in and out of the lineup for San Antonio where we didn't see much of Chemezi. You know what I mean? I, I, I was, it was almost the same, but I think Drew – took a lot of those minutes right drew had uh that day where he played in austin and played in san antonio against the warriors <laughs> in the same day you know he was ready i like drew i don't want to lose drew because to me drew can help us uh at that backup or, or third string big big guy he's not afraid i think he has that dog in him i think that drew can actually play at this level i think he can score at this level and, and I, he can definitely defend uh, in the NBA. And Chemezi, Chemezi's one that's going to bring that offensive upside. You know, where Drew's a lot of uh, athleticism, energy. He can score, but Chemezi's got game. And he proved it here in the FIBA World Cup tournament, playing for Nigeria, actually helping Nigeria clinch a, a spot. So we're going to see him next summer in the Olympics. Um, he can shoot, man. He can play. He had a nasty poster off an inbounds play. That's that's That was his highlight of the FIBA World Cup. Go look it up if you haven't seen it. Chemezi put some dude on a poster. Ugly. Ugly. And when you look at his Austin Spurs highlights, it's a lot of mid-range jumpers. It's a lot of uh, a lot of attacking the rim. You know, it's, it's very much like LaMarcus where he wants to work in that mid-range. So those two guys are in the same boat. I don't know who's going to play, who's not going to play. I know that Chemezi lost out on an opportunity to show us in the Summer League where Drew Drew had, you know, took advantage of, I think, the lack of Chemezi being there, and, and he balled out. Lonnie Walker was head and shoulders above anyone else, and I think Drew was right there with them, man. I mean, when Drew was in the game... The game looked too easy for Drew. The game looked too easy for Lonnie. And I, I feel like that would have happened with Chemezi, but I don't know. I really don't know. That's a big question mark. I still like Chemezi. I still want him to be I still want him to be around. I still like what he can be for us, especially with the young squad we have to have Chemezi in the mix. I think that's a positive. 
that's a positive thing so i don't know y'all let me know in the comments below what y'all think about our big men lineup make sure that you subscribe to a bucking spurs podcast on instagram twitter itunes spotify big heads media podcast network big heads media.com nba you can find a podcast there as well okay so you're not gonna get spurs content anywhere else don't rely don't tune into espn fox sports southwest or I mean, fox sports news and undisputed and all that stuff don't tune into any of that and expect to hear anything about the san antonio spurs go to a bucking spurs podcast i'll catch you on the next episode go spurs go i want some nasty let's get it 14 days until the season let's get it <laughs>